Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. We're going to show you how to set up a Griffin Montana mongoose and just kind of go over some of the features and benefits of this and uh, go, every, go through everything from setting it up to placing a hook in it. So first of all, it comes in a case like this. It's not a pistol, it is a vise. So we'll just open it up and this is what you get. So it wants you to pull. So if I open this up, cool thing about this vise is it comes with a ceramic bobbin comes with a hackle gauge and instructions that Curtis would have to have somebody read to him. So anyway, that's what's on that side. Um, on this side is the meat and potatoes of the vise. So um, the jaw is, is pretty adjustable. We'll go into that, that a little bit when once we get it all set up. Cool thing about this vise that I really like is that it comes with both a pedestal and a C clamp. So you can see our stem here. And a lot of guys say, well, I got a C clamp vise, I want to put it on a base. Uh, the problem with that is a C clamp vise requires a longer stem. So with the mongoose, all you do is you screw in this little extender if you want to use the C clamp version. I personally don't use the C-clamp, so this is this stays back in the case. See, nice aluminum C-clamp, very sturdy. We're going to put this aside because we're not going to demonstrate that right now. Um, so this is the, the base. This is for rotary tying. Um, if you've watched any videos that we've done, we don't have these on our vices. They're not necessary, but if you wanted to stick them on there, um, it's kind of a thread rest. Um, you can use it if you want. I'll show you how to set it up. The extension handle for easy rotary tying. And, oh, it looks like they gave us two extension uh, pins here. And the best part, I think, of the vise is this um, material clip. We'll show you how to install that as well. So, under here is the base. So we'll take the pedestal base out, and we'll just get rid of this for now. So one of the things that some people don't like about the, the Griffin is the, the size of the pedestal base. But it looks like they are starting to give a little bit bigger base in their vise. And the reason for that is, is because the head of the vise is not directly over the stem and I'll show you what that means in just a second once we get it set up. Okay so we've got the base here um, you can leave the you know this this uh, bobbin holder or thread holder thing on your stem if you want not a big deal I don't know if I have mine on there can't remember so I'm just gonna stick this in the pedestal and it gives you an Allen key here, and I'll use that to do the setup of the vise. Okay, so we've got our, our pedestal here. We've got the stem. Just slide it in here so that you can see through this hole. Um, and then the head of the vise fits through like this. Um, Scott Sanchez helped design this, and he designed it so that you could turn the vise up or, or down or whatever. Um, I don't think I've ever used that feature, but it is kind of cool to know that it's it's there if you need it. Our, our head assembly almost done. First thing I'm going to do is just tighten this hex key right here. And you don't have to crank this super tight if you want to move it up and down like this. Um, I personally have mine pretty cranked down because I don't want it to move. You know when you're when you're tying with deer hair or anything like that. Get this lined up. Okay, so that's plenty. So we're basically set up. Um, we're going to put this crank on here. If you don't like the crank, you can leave it off. That's one thing I like. There's a lot of the vices out there. If you buy a material clip, a, a crank, the C clamp, any of that extra stuff, it's going to cost you some extra money. 
So I like to put my crank on about as far down this handle as I can get it. And so, I mean, you can put Loctite on this, you can get it, you know, completely set up however you want, but I mean, I don't think I've ever had to re-tighten this, this crank handle at all. Okay, material clip. So, the material clip is kind of an interesting deal. It's got like a piece of plastic on the inside of it. So I'm just going to unscrew one side of this and I'm going to stick it through the middle of the the I guess down arm on the vise. I'm just making up terms as I go. The black thinger that says mongoose. So you know screw it in tight but not super tight. You should still be able to move it quite a bit. And the, the ideal thing is, like if you're tying an articulated fly that's big and long, you can just push it back up like that. If you're tying a smaller fly and you want to use it to hold materials out of the way, you can move it down. So, material clip is very, very cool. You can even add a tiny little bit of oil in this, in the parts that touch, so that it slides a little bit easier. Then, um, the jaw actually has two different, or three different settings for, for larger flies, if you want to if you want to line it up perfect with the axis. I think I've got mine set just kind of right in the middle like right where it comes but if you want it to sit up higher you can. As you can see there are three different slots to put the screw in. So I'm actually just going to leave it in the middle and as you'll see oh, geez. As you'll see, even though it's it's in the middle, um, I can adjust that up and down as you know as much as I want to. So, with each different setting, it gives you a little bit more uh, ability to adjust it perfect to where you want it. So I'm just going to put it, I don't know, about right here, and I'll just crank that down. So there we have it. The vise is essentially ready to tie. Oh, I guess, I guess I better show you how to do this as well, even though I'm going to take it right back off. So this, the bobbin cradle, or whatever you call it, um, there's an O-ring here on the stem where you can regulate how high this is. And then there's also uh, a screw here that you can adjust and it will stay pretty steady and if you want to get out of the way you just kind of flip it this way. A lot of guys will like pile up finished flies on this or whatever. Um, I personally think it just kind of gets in the way. So I'm going to take that off while we're doing this demo. Okay so for the most part we're ready to tie on the Griffin. Um, one thing that I always recommend and this is one of the things that we get calls on a lot is you know the vise doesn't really rotate very smoothly and there's a quick fix to that. It's very easy. So in order to get this to run more smoothly, what you're going to do is you're going to stick the hex key back here and you're going to loosen this, this screw, not all the way, but just enough so that you can screw this, uh, this mechanism right here so that it creates a little bit of space. Okay. So now you can move, you can wiggle your vise back and forth and that's where you need to, to oil up. Okay, so from the factory it comes with a little bit of grease, so I'm just going to use this same hex key and a little bit of tissue and stick it down in there, just kind of clean that off a little bit, you know, it'll, it'll help your rotation a little bit, but not as much as oil. Okay. So we've got that all cleaned out. Now I can wiggle it back and forth. Now what I'm going to do is take some sewing machine oil or real oil or whatever it may be and I'm just going to dab a little bit on into that junction and then twist the o-ring all around to spread that and then I'm going to do a little bit more here on the center and the, the, the piece that goes that kind of rotates in there. It's not ball bearings and I don't think you need bearings. That's not really necessary. But it's just a shaft of Delrin or plastic. So now it's it's really nice and oiled. So the key now 
is putting this back together. So if I screw this on too tight, it's not going to rotate at all. But if I put it on too loose, it's going to wobble up and down. So what I do is I get the o-ring so that, it, that it's barely touching and that the vise doesn't wobble up and down anymore. So that's about as tight as I want it. And then the rest of the, the tightening is done with the hex screw in the back of the vise. Right, right key. So now I'm going to tighten that, make sure that it's lined up nice. So I'm going to tighten that in and now it's way more smooth than it was before. So um, I like the vise so that if I set it at a 90 degree angle or upside down that it will stay that way. So the way that I've got it set up right now is just about perfect for how I like to tie. It will actually get a little bit looser as this oil gets into the vise. And so you have a knob down here underneath the vise that you can adjust the tension with as well. Now the knob is, is actually um, pretty good, but sometimes it gets oil down into that as well. And so I pretty much like to lock my the tension of my, my rotary feature. So what I did is I took some Loctite, I put it on this little plastic knob, I found the happy medium of where I wanted to be for my rotary tying and then I screwed it into that and it locked it. So oil the vise down probably once every six months. You know, it doesn't require a lot of uh, maintenance at all. Okay, so two final things that we're going to go over with this vise are the pedestal base and putting hooks in the jaw. So the pedestal base in my opinion is too small for this vise just because the the head is offset from the center stem. So basically the center point for your rotary is is pretty near to you and if you're aggressive with your rotary you can tip the vise like this. It's really easy to tip. The easiest way to go about this is, you know, find somebody that can cut you a piece of quarter inch sheet or quarter inch steel um, to about, you know, you want to increase your your base by about two inches and, and be quite heavy. Then you can just take some rare earth magnets and stick them onto the bottom of this and you can just put it right there on your vise. Um, the thick rubber pad on this you you could probably peel right off but uh, I mean if you want to upgrade your your base that's probably the easiest way. There are some other expensive bases out there um, but Curtis and I both have replaced this base with a more substantial base. Um, so the good thing about this vise that, that I really like is uh, um, the, the length of the jaw and I think that that, that makes it require a lot less pressure to really lock a hook down um, to a hundred percent lockdown. Um, you notice that there are no notches in the jaw no grooves for, for hooks to sit in and the jaw on, is the only jaw that it comes with. There's no other like midge jaw or big fly jaw because it frankly doesn't need it. Um, Curtis and I fish a lot of midges. Uh, we, we tie everything from size 32 on this to big huge sail flies size 7 aught and larger. So it, it will hold pretty much any hook you throw at it. Okay, so we've got a big old size 3 out hook. This is a, basically a bass jig hook, and it will take quite a bit bigger hook. But the idea is when you put a hook in here, you don't clamp this down so hard that it will hold the hook. Okay, You, you clamp it down just enough so that there's a little bit of room on each side of the hook, and if I were to drop the hook, it would fall out of the vise. So essentially, also with a big hook like this, I'm not going to try to put it right here at the tip of the jaws. I'm going to put it further back in so that the you know some meat in this jaw can can grab it. So once it's here I'm just going to um, move the lever over until I hear it kind of click into place. And as you can see 
it doesn't click into place directly under the jaw because sometimes you'll be wrapping with your your bobbin and if you're wrapping at an angle that lever might get in the way I actually when I when I close the jaws I actually move it even further out just like that so it's completely out of the way but anyway I mean that hook is in there I can probably yeah, lift the vise up put it back down and it hasn't slipped a millimeter get this back in center all right so there we have a three-aught hook completely seated and I'm not saying that other vices can't do this but the test the, the true test is taking a big hook out of the vise and then putting a small hook into it so what kind of adjustment does it take to go from this size hook to this one this is a size 18 you won't even be able to see it but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out about a half a turn um, on the the top knob and this one even has more leeway I mean it, it's got a lot of lot of room I don't need to get it super close to the hook and just kind of stick it in the right there in the right in the top section of that let me see the reflections there a little bit so there you see it there's our hook in the vise again it's rock solid it's not going to move anywhere if I bent that down it would just completely slip out so that that's the main reason why we use this vise there are lots of vices out there that have really good rotary assemblies really good crank assemblies good pedestal bases probably better pedestals than this but no vise that we've tested can go from large to small and all in between with a hundred percent lockout like the Griffin Mongoose does. So anyway, that's the proper way to seat the hook. Just remember, leave the top one fairly loose. And if you're really having to crank this bar or this lever shut, you're probably putting way too much pressure on the hook and on your jaws. Uh, kind of as a general rule of thumb, use as little pressure as you can at first. Um, and then if your hook still wiggles, you know, take it out and then tighten this knob again. Another thing is, you will not be able to move this knob once the vise is engaged. So if you need to adjust it, you've got to take the hook out. Now you can adjust that well. Alright, so there you have it, the, the Griffin Montana Mongoose. Uh, this is the vise we've been using for a lot of years now. Uh, we really like it. Holds basically any hook we've thrown at it, and we've thrown a lot of hooks at it. We just wanted to kind of further explain how to customize this setup so that it performs the way you expect it to. Uh, it can be found on our store site, store.flyfishfood.com, and we also have a review done on it at www.flyfishfood.com.